Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Aeroid District. In today's video, we will be working with common houseplants. Now, um, this is an Aeroid channel, so I collect a lot of rare plants, but sometimes I like to get back to the basics. So yeah, um, every plant in this video, you should be able to find in the big box stores where they are available commercially. <laughs> I don't know what to say next, so that was the intro. <laughs> Alright y'all, I have this staghorn fern and it is stagnant. I got this about a month ago and it's just been laying on my kitchen counter to the side just like this. And it hasn't done anything because I, you know, it needs to be mounted. It needs to be set up in some type of a way. I really don't know how to do that because I don't know much about staghorn ferns. So, you know, I just keep questioning myself how am I going to really do this in a unique way? Um, will it be good? Will it be good content for you all? Will it be informative? I don't know, but that's the first order of operation. So let's just get into it. So I thought to myself, what can I use to mount this? I've seen everybody use a wood plank. I've seen everybody use a piece of uh, uh, like cork bark, but I was thinking to myself, I want to be able to show someone another option when it comes to mounting a staghorn fern. Now I bought this one as a small like seedling I believe and I wanted to watch it grow so I could actually learn about it because if I go to the Home Depot or Lowe's and buy a really big one it's just gonna be that you know and they sell those in hanging pots I ain't want to deal with it. This is small and easy to deal with and I can try some new things with it. So I pondered to myself I tarrieth with myself and I'm like, what can I use? So I decided to go to the big box store and just walk around and see what I could find. And what I stumbled upon is this placemat for a plant pot. I was at Lowe's and I walked around the garden section and this is what I saw. These are supposed to be able to withstand water. It's made out of cork in the back and it's like this leather material on the front so these are supposed to be able to withstand the moisture from a plant pot sitting on top so I figured I can use this and another reason why I use this is because it's circular I don't really know the anatomy of a staghorn fern if I were to mount this to this, this to this cork mat and it's upside down it's circular so I'd be able to turn it if need be so for starters this mat is eight inches in diameter I figured that'd be a good size for this particular small staghorn fern it'll give it some room to grow then we have these U hooks I got these off of Amazon it's like a what is it 110 piece set and as you can see there are various sizes I originally bought this from my Hoya tree but I figured that this mat is kind of soft so these can just screw right in so they can hold the string that is going to keep the plant mounted i also figured there are some other options out there like these little cork mats that you use for your kitchen pots so you know when you got your hot kitchen pots you put these on there so it doesn't burn your counter or whatever the case may be these are made out of cork so I figured, you know, you can use these as well. Maybe I'll do that in the future, but I'm going to use this one and see what, you know, see what goes down. Let's see how this turns out. All right, so I used four hooks at the end of each diameter. And I think my next step would be to make a mountain of damp sphagnum moss in the center of this cork mat. See how we can do that. The challenge is going to be trying to keep all of this moss on here. <laughs> um, and hopefully I don't make a mess on my coffee table. So I figured that's a good little mountain of moss. And I don't know, Mother Nature is telling me to keep the soil on these roots. So therefore I'm gonna take this and sit it right on top. And I'm gonna try to cover it up with more moss. So I did buy some fishing wire from Amazon. I cannot tell you the, the 
the size of it maybe you can go ahead and see that but pretty much what I did was when I went shopping on Amazon I tried to find the cheapest price fishing wire I didn't care what the diameter of the string was I just got it but um what I'm gonna do is I tied a knot at the end of this I'm gonna hook it onto one of the hooks and early on I'm gonna start trying to tie some of this sphagnum moss down and then adding on top of that and then tying that down as well I don't want to tie it too tight and snap the little hooks so I'll be careful of that and it doesn't matter which hook I'm just <laughs> choosing random hooks to hook this wire around yo have y'all ever watched Jasmina Low videos and she says this a couple of times, I'm not rich in sphagnum. <laughs> it's so funny when she said that because I just be feeling her uh, like I'm not rich. In, I'm running out of sphagnum moss already. I've used a lot for this mountain and um, I have very little left. And, uh, you know, I can't, you know, you got to order it online. I don't really know of a place where they sell the big bales of sphagnum moss uh, in store. So I'm always having to order it like. I'm definitely not rich in sphagnum. <laughs> not easy to come by. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I can go to the pet store and get some. But it's a little bit more expensive than what you would get um, on Amazon or what have you. All right, that was actually pretty easy. Uh, it's pretty much mounted. And I'm going to assume that the top of this is the green portion of the leaves because underneath the leaves it's like a pale green um, that's the bottom that's where the spores come out so I figured that it's supposed to go this way now what will happen is with staghorn ferns it will grow a crown and that crown will cover up all of this sphagnum moss so it ain't gonna look like this once it starts to grow it'll grow these big leaves that have like a crown shape and that crown shape will cover all of this moss on the top and on the bottom. So now all I have to do left is I need to drill through this cork mat so that I can be able to hang it. All right, so that project was a little bit easier than I thought. But um, yeah, I'll just hang it up in my kitchen. Anytime I notice that that sphagnum moss is dry, I'll take it off the hook, water it in the sink, and I think we should be good. I will keep you updated on um, new growth. Okay, so I need y'all to come with me over to my mama house. She's recovering right now, so she can't really take care of her plants. So we're going to go over there, we're going to water her plants real quick, and then after that we're going to come back here because we have another task at hand. Let's go. It is a beautiful day in Los Angeles, and I'm here to help my mother out, which includes watering her plants. Now, my mom's just sitting over here watching her story, so I won't bother her. I'm just checking out her little plant corner that she got going on. And I'm gonna water some of these plants because just about every last one of them was bone dry. So I'll start with this Ficus tanike. I don't remember when she got this, but the main thing is dry. I just water it and set it to the side. Next, we have this Aglonema. I bought this for her, and I remember when I bought it, it was green, yellow with just very little red. Now the whole entire plant is pink. So go figure. I don't know how that happened, but um, she really likes that one. Then we have this Hoya Puba Calyx. Pretty cool little plant. Um, definitely underwatered. Now that I done watered everything, I, I ever so slightly rearranged this whole area, and this is how it looks. So, uh, yeah, let me take you through some of the plants that are in this little area. First, we have a philodendron birkin. Next to that is a philodendron micans. And above the micans, we have a Hoya pubicalix. And then we have this pink colored aglonema species. Next to that is actually a philodendron red emerald. 
And above that is a ficus tanike. And uh, on that trellis is a golden pathos. Now, this is the direction that the light comes in. And that is very important because my mother will be going out of town. So she needs that natural light. Down here is a fern. And next to that is a dracaena. So there you have it. Um, I cleaned up a little bit and rearranged and watered the plants and I took care of my mother. So let's head back over to my house. Okay, before we do our next project, I wanna show you all some common plants that I feel like are quite underrated, if you will. The Diffenbachia camouflage. I see you, I see you. <laughs> no, <Nah, laughs> nah, I like this one. This is, um, this type of irrigation, for just 20 to 30 dollars you go to like i got this from home depot or lowe's you get something like this for 20 to 30 dollars and you get this unique type of irrigation now you tell me if this was a monstera with this type of irrigation you would be paying hundreds of dollars for it it got like a little mint mint color with the with the dark green spot speckles and you see a little bit of white and different shades of green in there um yeah why do we not go crazy for things like this but for something like a monstera it always boggles me i know the reason why but it always boggles me that um you know some of the rare plant collectors do sleep on some of these nice plants this thing gets big just like a monstera and i feel like it's definitely comparative to a thai constellation or these other special monsteras that they have out there so yeah, I'm a fan of these common plants. Like, you got to tap in. Like, this is definitely easy. I water this once a month. It's in a black pot like this, and I keep a layer of gravel over the top, you know, so that um, it holds in the moisture. So when I water it, it's a cane type of begonia. It will hold on to a lot of water. And as soon as you see these leaves kind of drooping a little bit too much, that's the only time I water it. And that tends to be just about once a month. So it's, it's a house plant. This is a house plant. What qualifies to me as a house plant is a plant that you don't have to do too much with. You water it and you leave it alone. That's a plant that belongs in your house for aesthetics. The only pepperoni I trust. This is the uh, pe Peperomia obtusifolia. Peperomia obtusifolia, that's what this one is called. Amazing houseplant. It's the only Peperomia that I trust because it's the only one that I can grow. <laughs> and the thing I really like about this one is the variegation. Now, it's underrated because this is very comparative to some rare Hoyas. People will spend a lot of money if a Hoya had this type of variegation. Tell me I ain't lying. You know, so the fact that this one can grow into a large bush, you can trellis it and make this a whole bush situation and it's very easy to grow. You can throw it outdoors when you don't want it in indoors and it grows almost anywhere. This, this one gives me zero problems at all because it's very succulent and it's equipped to handle a lot of different type of situations, whether it be cold, hot, um, medium light, or even really, really high light. So these do well in some direct sun you know and uh yeah that's that's crazy i guarantee you if there was a hoya that looked like this <laughs> it would be very very expensive because i think there is they got a hoya out there called the argentia princess it's comparative to this if you ask me you know um this one may even look better if you were to compare them leaf for leaf so yeah underrated Simple as that. That's just my opinion. So speaking of Hoyas, it is time for this Hoya of Bovada to come up out of this cup. Now, I've had this Hoya of Bovada for some time. I grow this one indoors, and that's the reason why it has this deep green color on it with a little bit of splash. So I actually like this one as a common house plant, something just for the aesthetics around your house, very easy. This one actually grows in lower light. And that's why you get like this deep 
uh, color on it in comparative to the one that I got outdoors. It's all pale and it just looks rugged. So I just got a new pot off of Amazon and I figured that I wanted to set this up for a long term situation in that particular pot. So we'll do that right now. So this is what the pot looks like. It's kind of a vibe, right? And I'm figuring that, you know, if I if I do this right and pot this plant up in this pot, it can be it can be pretty cool. And you know, this Hoya Abovada, highly recommended, very common Hoya, but you can find it at you know a lot of chain stores that sell Hoyas. Or um even some outdoor nurseries have this plant, but it has a lot of versatility, you know. The fact that I could put this by a window, I could put it more so in the interior of my house. I can even put it outdoors. So, you know, I feel like this is the proper, like a proper glaze pot will do this justice. So this is what my Hoya mix normally looks like when I pot them up. I do not use normal potting mix because typically the, Hoya, the Hoyas that I put in normal potting mix they don't last too long. When you use something that has the cocoa chunks or bark, sphagnum moss, leca, you know, a, a nice little soilless mix, they do well, they last long, and they actually grow quickly for me. Um, so it's an epiphytic plant. Most of the Hoyas are epiphytic, um, and they need this type of an airy mix. I showed y'all that ceramic pot that ceramic pot does hold on to a lot of moisture so you know i definitely took that into consideration when i just made this mix real quick so i just found this in my garage i think i'm going to incorporate this into potting up that obovada i found this as a used item on amazon so i can't provide no links to something like this um it was a used item i got it for cheap uh somebody opened the package and returned it and i was able to buy it for cheap but it has this little metal base. I don't know if that's gonna help anything out. But uh, yeah, it's bendable, so I'm gonna put this in the pot and I like the aesthetics of like this natural rope type material. So we'll use that and see what we can make happen. So here is the obovada all potted up. If you know me, you know that I will almost always top dress a pot with something especially if it is a decorative pot like this so yeah I did stick <laughs> some pine cones along the top and the back and um just to bring a little bit more interest I mean shoot I always use what I have laying around and um I try to make some use out of it but I mean it's a top dress you can easily take it off if you don't like it but this is how I'm gonna set this obovada up for you know for long term you know so i think it'll fill up this pot with the roots and it'll probably start going crazy and um we'll worry about that when the time comes but for now i'm gonna set this up in my plant room and uh just let this one go up <laughs> i do have a lot more little chores to do around the house when it comes to the house plants but i'll save that for another day what I'm going to do now is move on to my garden to table experience, you know, because y'all y'all know that I've been growing food outdoors in my backyard. And, um, I, you know, I start doing a little segment where I'll do something that I get from my backyard, bring it in and make an edible dish with it. So, yeah, let's do that right now. <laughs> OK, for starters, I want to show you all my green stock grow tower. Now, if you live in an apartment or you got a small limited amount of space, and you wanted to grow some vegetables or other outdoor plants, this right here is what you need. <laughs> now it comes with five tiers. I'm only using three at this point. And uh, should I quickly show you what I got? Mind you, it, it's portable, it's on wheels. And what happened is you fill, the, you fill water in at the top and it disperses to all of these tiers. And there's actually a tube that you can drain the water out. Say if you wanted to drain it off of your balcony or into another area, there is a tube that you can use. Um, that's if you buy the little base plate. This one, I bought this base plate off of Amazon just so you can roll it around on. But I got strawberries, I got broccoli, and down here I have uh, bok choy. 
Quick story about bok choy. When I was in the fourth or fifth grade, my teacher, Mrs. Yamamoto, she taught me how to eat with chopsticks. And I think we were having an international food day at some point, and um, she had me try bok choy. Now, being a nine or 10 year old, I did not like crunchy vegetables. I just did not eat crunchy vegetables. I think the only vegetables I eat was um, the, the the pickles off of my Happy Meal or something like that. <laughs> but I tried it and I was like, okay, okay, I actually liked it. So I haven't had it since then. Now I'm actually growing it. And today I'm gonna quickly stir fry up some of this bok choy. It is time to harvest, garden to table. So this is a quicker look at this green stock. And today we're gonna to be making this bok choy. So let's harvest some of it. Uh, which segment do I wanna pick out? Let's see. I think we'll harvest these two. So I'll go in here and pull this one out. take this one as well now I'm happy to harvest these because I actually have some more seeds that just germinated and um, what I'll do is put those little seedlings right back in here and um, I'll have more to come soon these grow really fast so these got to this size in a matter of I think that was what two months if I'm not mistaken but yeah, I'll wash these up, I'm gonna stir fry, and I'll be back with my garden to table experience. All right, so I'm all done. We got the bok choy, garlic toast, and that motherfucking peppercorn steak. I like my steak sliced into thin slices, so that's what I did. I cooked this in the air fryer. I sauteed the bok choy really quick with some soy sauce, garlic, you know, a little bit of seasoning is on my choice. But y'all do know that bok choy, if you eat it raw, it's amazing. It actually tastes good just straight out of the garden without being cooked. But if you cook it with any type of flavor of your choice, those of you who know, you just know, bok choy is a very tasty vegetable, <laughs> I'm telling you. I forgot that I added a little bit of brown sugar to the bok choy. Yeah, this tastes good. I'm about to have dinner. That's all I got for y'all. So, um, yeah, see y'all on the next one.